Hi, welcome back to You Can Homeschool. I'm Tracy Hagerman, the Happy Homeschooler, and I'm here today with, I'm not here today with Pat. I'm actually here today with Pat's daughter, Lauren Meeks. And the reason Lauren is here with us today, as some of you have heard when we did our 50th episode, that we were going to be uh, presenting a, a special series of podcasts that are on homeschool graduates. So myself personally, I was convinced to homeschool when I heard a, 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 a wonderful girl who spoke from stage who had been homeschooled. And she is the one that convinced me homeschooling was the way to go with my own uh, children. So today we have Lauren Meeks on, and she's going to share with us her journey of homeschooling and where is she now? What is she doing? Because I want you to be encouraged as a homeschooler that there is a future, that homeschooled uh, students are successful in life and in work. So Lauren, I'm just so um, excited to have you here today. And um, Lauren and I have not met before today, which I think is always the most fun because we never pre-plan what we're going to say. So Lauren, I'm going to start and ask you to tell us a little bit about your background, su such as how long you were homeschooled, if you had siblings, that sort of thing. Yeah, um, thanks for having me, Tracy. So I was homeschooled pretty much my entire school career. I was pulled out of a a private kindergartner kindergarten um, in in the middle of the year and then I graduated from high school as a homeschooler so more or less all the way through um, I'm one of five siblings um, I have an, an older brother who was pulled out at the same time that I was so I think he was in second grade and um, three younger siblings that are significantly um, younger than I am they're uh, 9 11 and 14 years younger than me so we have quite an age gap. It's a, it makes for interesting sibling dynamics when you, you have that much of an age gap. Um, but yeah, I was homeschooled all the way, pretty much all the way through and, and I, I had a great experience. I really enjoyed it. Okay, great. So how many years ago then did you graduate, let's say, from homeschooling? Um, I graduated in 2007. So that's 14 years ago now. You're making okay. me feel old here, Tracy. <laughs> I'm not trying to make you feel old, but I really wanted our audience to see like after homeschooling, like what happens. Um, so did you, in, you, you just alluded to the fact that you enjoyed it, but can you tell me why you enjoyed it? Well, at the time, I really liked the flexibility that it gave me. Um, I had a job from the age of, well, when I was quite young, like probably 10 and 11, I was working for my dad. He owned his own um, construction company. But then I had a job with like an outside employer at the age of um, 15. So, and I was babysitting before that. Um, so, you know, I, I liked that it, would, it enabled me to save for my future and just be around other people. Um, I played sports and danced and acted and like community um, programs and things like that. And that was all always a lot of fun. Um, now, looking back, I the things that I probably enjoyed most, I don't think I realized at the time, but um, well, maybe not enjoy might not be the right word, but I appreciate um, just the way that it forced me to think for myself and, you know, learn, learn how to how to learn how to be a self-starter. And because my I had so many siblings that were so much younger than me, my mom wasn't able, or my parents weren't able to give me a lot of like hands-on help with schooling, which kind of sucked actually at the time. <laughs> but when I went to college and then grad school and beyond, you know, it actually um, taught me a lot of things that were, were really helpful traits for those experiences that I had later on. Okay, so you just alluded to the fact that you went beyond homeschooling. So homeschooling wasn't the end for you. Can you tell us a little bit about, um, like, how did you, as a homeschooler, approach a college or a university? <laughs> With much fear and trepidation. <laughs> <laughs> I was so freaked out when I went to, or when I was looking at colleges. Um, I ended up going to Berry College in Rome, Georgia, which is a small private school. It's about... Um, 4,000 people, I think. I don't remember exactly the size of it now, but it's, it's pretty small. Um, and when I was first looking for colleges, 
I mean, I didn't know where to start. You know, you don't have a guidance counselor usually when you're when you're homeschooled. So that was one of the challenges. Um, and I was looking at the entire state or the entire country. Um, I didn't know what degree I wanted. Like I was lost in the woods. And honestly, in my in my case. I actually decided to go there just because I went to the campus and I liked the aesthetic look of the campus. Um, but in hindsight, it was like, it was perfect for me because it's a smaller school, like all my professors knew me. Um, and so there was still kind of that small school atmosphere, <clears throat> even though obviously I was in a university at that point. And um, I, I just felt like I was, I was a lot more able to thrive than I would have been in, you know, a big, public school, something like that, um, going from, you know, a class of one to a class of 10,000, that just wouldn't have been very good for me. So it was a really good transition period, I think. But, um, but yeah, I, I actually double majored. Um, I have a Bachelor of Arts in Spanish and a Bachelor of Science in Economics. Um, and then I also went on to graduate school. I have a Bachelor, or, uh, sorry, a Master's of Science in International Affairs from Georgia Tech in Atlanta. So um, for me, that the, the, the small private school was a nice intermediary between um, homeschooling and the real world, so to speak. Okay. So looking back, was it difficult as a homeschooler to get into um, any of the college or university? Do you know? I mean, really, the short answer is no. I applied to half a dozen, and I think I got accepted into all of them. I mean, the trick there is I had good grades from high school. So, you know, if you're a homeschooler who doesn't have good grades, it's probably going to be just as hard as a, as a public schooler who doesn't have good grades. Um, but, you know, I, I think I, I wrote, a, I'm a pretty strong writer. So I, you know, I wrote good application letters. It was a little bit harder to get scholarships, um, mm -hmm. at least at first. So when my initial offer came from my school, um, they gave me some amount of, of money. I don't remember exactly how much it was, but Barry is a very expensive school. And so I still had about $10,000 a semester that weren't paid for. Um, and so I applied to a lot of outside scholarships and those were a lot easier to get than like with the university. But something that, you know, I, I really want to emphasize, like in my experience, um, I almost didn't go to Barry at all because I was so freaked out about being $80,000 in debt by the time I graduated. Um, and so I went one semester, I did really well, got all A's. And then I just went to my guidance counselor, to my um, advisor and told him, I was like, look, I love this school. I wanna stay, but I can't afford it. You know, can you do anything to help me? Um, and they ended up giving me a full ride for the rest of my um, college career. So I graduated with $9,500 in debt instead of the 80,000, which is- Wow. I will take that. Yeah. So, you know, a lot of a lot of people are scared like by the initial offer of the school. And especially if you wanna go to like a private school that had, that's, has a lot of endowments, that doesn't necessarily have to be the final price tag that you pay, you just have to ask, you have to, you have to work hard and prove yourself because it's harder for them to, 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 to compute homeschool grades with public schooler grades. They don't know what they mean. Um, so you have to do well and then just ask for what you need and you might be surprised. Well, I love that. You sure you're not in sales? You don't have a background in sales <laughs> to, to be able to uh, have the university fund your, uh, sorry, college, I, I'm in Canada, so I always say university, but the college fund your studies. But again, I heard you say that you had all A's, so I think that might have had something to do with it as well. And I was active. I was, a, by that point, I was an officer in multiple clubs on campus. And like, I was a very, I was I had a, an on-campus job as well. So I was a very active student. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think you sound like the typical homeschooler where academics is just one little piece of the puzzle. There's, you know, involved in activities, volunteering, working, part-time jobs, sometimes a couple jobs. Um, so I, I know, um, you know, my kids associate with other kids, that's sort of the typical homeschooler. They're not, you know, the joke is always we're, we spent, we're homeschooling, but we're never at home. And it sounds like yours, you're kind of like that as well. Is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I think that's part of the beauty of homeschooling is that you, you get exposed to different things kind of by the nature, just, just that's the nature of the beast. You, you have to be exposed to different things because you're not with 30 other kids, the same age and stage of life as you. So, you know, you help out with your little siblings or you get a job or, you know, you take, um, 
uh, dual enrollment courses as a high schooler with the in the community college with college students. And so it just forces you, it forced me at least, to become more well adapted, you know, which I'm laughing because I, I mean, we've all heard the question, oh, how do you socialize your kids when they're homeschooled? <laughs> and I really do feel like I was more socialized to use that term. I hate that term. Um, and well adapted when I got to college than, than a lot of my peers as, as freshmen, as incoming freshmen. Okay. Now you were talking about, you know, you were able to develop a lot of different in a lot of different areas, all the things that you've talked about. So what do you think were some of the non-academic benefits of homeschooling that you believe led you to where you are today? And maybe you can tell us a little bit more about what you do today and link that to the benefits of homeschooling. Well, the biggest one, which I have said my whole life, and I, I still stand by this, as I alluded to earlier, is that homeschooling taught me how to learn, which is sort of academic, but not really. So I'm, I'm going to go with it anyway. Um, it's it's not that I, you know, had, yeah, I learned the math, math or science or any particular subject, but it taught me how to seek out things that I'm interested in and learn more about them. Um, and I think that gave me a lot of confidence to not be afraid to fail because I could just I can learn more about it and then I won't fail the next time. And that was just kind of inbred into me as part of my, my homeschooling education. Um, so what I do now is um, I'm laughing because I it's very far away from all three of the degrees that I have earned, but um, I uh, manage Airbnb properties. Um, I actually started my own business. So I'm, I'm an entrepreneur. And so I started b, &B Made Simple um, about five years ago. Uh, before that, I was an ESL teacher in South Korea um, through the Fulbright Scholarship. I was a Fulbright um, Scholar, which is also not related to my degrees or, you know, so I see a lot of, of kids, I mean, homeschooling and non-homeschooling who get freaked out about like, oh, what are they going to study in college? It really doesn't matter. Like, I mean, I, it matters, but it's not the end of the world if you don't end up using your degree. I still think going to college taught me a lot. Um, about life and prepared me. And, you know, I don't, I don't think that was, that was time wasted, but, um, but yeah, it's back to your question. Sorry, I'm kind of rambling. Oh, that's okay. I, you know, the most, um, most important non-academic things that I learned as a homeschooler was, was how to learn, how to enjoy learning. Um, and it gave me more confidence just to kind of be myself and not worry about what other people were thinking about me. Well, I, I love how you were talking about the different things that you've been able to do and you're saying not necessarily related to your degree and I think about as kids are graduating now from regular school private school or homeschooling one of the key things that employers are looking for now is the ability for um, youth of today the working youth of today to be able to pivot because we've all they've all been told your the job that you do will probably not exist in five years or whatever you're studying for, that job will completely change the requirements in five or 10 years. So the skill you talk about of being able to do, you know, teach ESL or run your own business, um, that is the skill, the skill of being able to switch things completely, you know, do a 180 degree turn is one of the most important skills that employers are looking for uh, now. So it's funny that, um, it's not a detriment. It's actually a really great thing. So interesting. Yeah. yeah, no, I totally agree. I actually was going to grad school because I wanted, I wanted to a career in the state department. I wanted to be an ambassador. That was my, my end goal. And I, I know that I'm very, very far away from that now, but um, I, I had, you know, some, some bad experiences with local government um, institutions during grad school and it just really turned me off of working for the government so yeah I was a business analyst and then I was a writer and now I'm, I'm pretty ingrained in my my current business but all of those things I mean I could go back and we don't have enough time to go through all of them but all of them taught me something you know really important about life and about myself and grew me as a person and as a businesswoman and an entrepreneur. And, you know, at the end of the day, I'm really grateful for all of them. But I think if I hadn't had that skill, if I hadn't learned that skill of, of learning how to learn um, and not being afraid of failure, 
um, then I'm not sure that I, I would have learned from all of those those things I had to pivot from. I actually I actually um, have a TEDx talk, and that is the topic of is the freedom of failure, because I think that's really important to be, um, because you're never going to succeed unless you're willing to fail as well. So that's kind of right. the story of my life these days. <laughs> right. Well, we'll definitely put that in the show notes, because I'm sure people would, um, you're so pleasant to uh, converse with. So I'm sure people would love to see your TED talk. So I'm definitely going to go look that up because I didn't know you had a TED talk. So that's pretty awesome. Yeah, um, it still weirds me out sometimes when, because I, I don't need to talk about it very often, but some sometimes random people that I meet, they'll be like, oh, I found your TEDx talk. And I'm like, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> so, so maybe elaborate on that. How did you end up doing a TEDx talk? So being, having a TEDx talk was one of my like, lifelong dreams. Um, but I, I wasn't really pursuing it, but it was, I had started, um, hosting, doing short-term rentals, which then eventually turned into my full-time job. But at the time it wasn't, um, we were just hosting people in our house, my husband and I, and at the time I was, I was writing full-time. That's what I did. Um, and so I wrote a book about our experiences as like as Airbnb hosts. It's called The World in Your Living Room. Um, and it's just a series of vignettes, you know, about fun and interesting people that that we've met through our um, hosting experience. So anyway, we um, we were talking with a guest one that one night and her brother was the, was local to the Atlanta area. So he came over to visit and it wasn't even the guest. It was the brother. We started talking to him and. I mentioned, that, or I think my husband mentioned my book and um, he's like, oh, that's really cool. You should do a TEDx talk. I'm like, yeah, I'd love to, <laughs> you know, I don't know where to start. And he said, um, well, actually I, I know um, a TEDx event organizer up in the, the Delaware area. So I'll connect you guys. So he connected me, put in a good word for me. Um, and that's eventually where I ended up. Um, I flew up there later that year to, to give my talk. So fantastic. How many years ago was that, Lauren? Um, that was four years ago, I think. Oh, yeah. that is fantastic. Because that is on a lot of people's bucket list these days to get on a TEDx talk. So, wow, that's that's incredible. I definitely going to go check that out. <laughs> <laughs> so looking back, OK, so you I'm going to take you back, to, if you can remember, back to your homeschool days and thinking about the day to day that you were homeschooling. Is there anything that you would do differently? I think um, my older brother and I had and continue to have um, a, a rather strained relationship. And I, I think that a lot of that was exacerbated by being together at the house all the time with each other. You know, now as an adult, I can look back and see that we were both you know, we had different coping mechanisms and we didn't know how to communicate our needs to each other and blah, 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 all that stuff. Um, but, you know, there's there's still damage that was done to the relationships. And, and we've seen that a lot in the past year and a half with COVID. Like, if you don't already have a healthy relationship, if you get stuck with someone at the house day in, day out, it's going to make your relationship worse, not better. It's going to um, uh, highlight, you know, whatever is already there. So, you know, for me, I, I would just have, I would have wanted <clears throat> some more intentional, I don't know, digging into that relationship and trying to heal that relationship with my brother before it got kind of like too bad. And um, I know my mom's a host of the show and I, and I'm not, you know, that's, that's not criticizing everyone. Every, everyone makes mistakes. Um, and she knows, you know, as well as I do some of the issues that we have, but, um, but yeah, I mean, I, education wise, honestly, I, I had a great education and I, I'm not complaining about that. I did have some some gaps. That's something that a lot of parents are concerned about. But honestly, all of the public schoolers that I met had gaps too. They were just probably different gaps. <clears throat> so I don't really see that as an issue. But, um, but yeah, I think you have to be extra careful of the relationship part of it um, <clears throat> when you're when you're at home all the time with each other. So right. And I thank you for being candid because that's one thing that your mom and I try to do is you know not present this perfect picture, but rather what's the reality. And I know even in my own home, uh, you know, some of the dynamics between my kids, because they're all very different um, personalities. And I guess I always looked at it as, okay, we have to be together this long. So we got to get along. So we got to work it out. <laughs> 
So, but um, I, I appreciate uh, what you're saying. Yeah. So I, it sounds like you would have wanted some more intentional uh, things to do to work on that relationship. Yeah. And I think, honestly, I think that w- that, that, that stems first with the parents being intentional. Like if the parents don't, if they don't know how to handle conflict on their own, well, that's really the only model that your kids are going to see because they, they're not seeing teachers they're not seeing, you know, classmates interact with each other. So, um, you know, if, if you're having trouble, I would, I would recommend that you take a good look at yourself as a parent first and see if there's anything that you need to be doing that, you know, can, can maybe help your kids relate to each other as well. Right. Okay. Thank you. So what are some of your favorite memories of homeschooling? Um, I loved the unit studies and this, this goes back to like teaching me how to enjoy learning. Um, so, I mean, I had every year I had kind of the standard subjects, you know, history, math, science, social studies, whatever. Um, but they were focused, they were tailored around my interests at the time. So I remember like one year I was really into Native Americans. Um, and so we did a unit study on Native American history and we got all dressed up and, you know, we, we did a, um, I think we did a meal or something like that. And then another year I was really into like Victorian era. So we did a unit study on Victorian era. Um, and I remember that actually very clearly. I, I decided I wanted to make um, the, you know, the big hoop skirt dresses from that, from that time period. And so I had like some weird cardboard contraption like to, to make my dress stick out or something. It was, it was a not, you know, a, to, um, ac- historically accurate costume, but it was a lot of fun. And those are, you know, it's just those sorts of things that really got me into it. And, um, and the other thing that was kind of is similar, I guess, that I really enjoyed were all of the, um, I was a part of a homeschool group that did a lot of um, field trips, um, field trips. And one of them in particular, there's a living history museum um, about an hour away from where I grew up. And they did, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a functional live um, working farm, like uh, 1800s farm. And so as kids, you can go and they'll, they'll give you a costume to wear. And, and if you're a girl, you know, you can learn how to cook or, you know, they go to the canning section or whatever, or be um, like a, a nurse's apprentice. And if you're a boy, you know, you can go to the farm or, you know, it's very like historically accurate. And that was, that was a lot of fun. So I felt like I had a much more like hands-on education, which I, I really enjoyed that. Okay. Yeah. The unit study seems to be one of the most popular things with the homeschoolers when people talk about, yeah, I loved homeschooling, especially the unit studies. And was that something that you would do um, at the same time as your brother? Like, did your mom do that stuff kind of including all of you or how was that done? I think we did. Honestly, I don't entirely remember because it was a long time ago now. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure my brother and I, we were two, technically two years apart, but I did two grades in one year. Um, and then my mom basically just kind of treated us as being in the same grade, like all the way through. So a lot of the stuff that we did was, was together. Yeah. Okay. And once your uh, younger siblings came along, how did that add or detract from your homeschooling experience? <laughs> Oh, you're going to get me in trouble with my mom here. Loaded. <laughs> um, so I, I, I think hmm, it detracted because my parents, well, my mom really was the main educator, but um, she, she had a lot less time to devote to me or, and, and my older brother. Um, Cause you know, she had three little babies running around. And so that was definitely hard for me. There were, there were some, there was some resentment there for a while. Um, but the flip side is like, once I got to high school, which was around the time when my siblings started being born, I, you know, I went and got a job. I took, um, dual enrollment classes at the local college. Um, my, actually my junior and senior senior year, it was all college classes. That's all I took. I didn't take any at, at home. So, you know, it was hard. And if I had a choice, I wouldn't have chosen it that way, but I can also see how, it was really beneficial to me and like kind of forcing me to grow up and be independent and, um, you know, learn how to take care of myself, like, because they were there, but right. there's definitely, you know, I was a snarky teenager when they yeah. were born. So there's definitely some like, would you stop having babies? <laughs> I, I think whether you were homeschooled or not, there's going to be some of that resentment. Yeah. Right. I love them now. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and also with the age uh, gap, all of a sudden this, it's like a, 
you know, there's no little ones around it. And all of a sudden, boom, 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 there's three running around getting into everything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. One of my big pet peeves is being late. I hate being late, even by like a couple minutes. And I do think actually that was from when my siblings were born because we were on time for the first 10 years of my life. And then, you know, you all of a sudden you have babies to deal with and we were never on time again. <laughs> I just yep, hate yep. It. <laughs> so do you have, do you have children, Lauren? I do not. not okay. Too. Okay. I like children, but right now I'm just the cool aunt to all my friends. Kids. Okay. That's okay. And um, so would you homeschool your own children? I would like to. Yeah. Okay. It's the, I, I mean, obviously that's a decision I'll have to make with my husband once we actually have kids. And since I'm an entrepreneur and have my own business, you know, there's, there's hard, some things that are, we'd have to figure out, but um, yeah, when I was in college, I used to say everyone should be homeschooled, you know, across the board. It's great. I loved it. I don't say that anymore because I recognize that kids have different needs and some kids it's just not, it's not the right thing for, okay. but if, you know, if it is a good fit with the kid's personality, I, I think homeschooling is great. And I would, I would really love to do it myself. Okay. Awesome. So I think we're coming up on time here. Um, so do you have any final words of wisdom for our audience? I would say, and this is kind of more like life wisdom. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that when I'm only in my thirties, but whatever, I'm going to say it anyway. <laughs> um, don't be scared to screw your kids up. They're <laughs> going to be okay, but also like be willing to, to admit when you've made mistakes, you know, when you're living, when you're living with them and educating them, they're going to see a lot more of you and the mistakes that you make. And I think it's really valuable for kids to be able to see that their parents make mistakes and acknowledge the mistakes and, um, you know, so that you can move forward. Cause sometimes it can be really hard to get past that if there was never an acknowledgement of, of the mistake. So that's my thoughts. <laughs> that's, your, that's your words of wisdom. No, I appreciate that. Um, yeah, I, I think about that. The, the day each of us, I think the day we become an adult is the day we realize that our parents aren't perfect. Mm -hmm. And it's hard, it's a hard pill to swallow. <laughs> yeah, no, one of the best pieces of advice that I got as a, as a young adult was um, if you want to become a functioning, productive member of society, you have to first forgive your parents, like period. That's it. Like everyone, every parent yeah. messes up, you know, no matter how good or bad you think they were. So just accept that and forgive them and move on. And, okay. and <laughs> what do you think is the most positive gift that your, you said your mom was the primary homeschooler. What do you think is the most positive gift that she gave you through that method of homeschooling? Well, I do think, you know, I love to learn and some of that's personality, but some of it is, um, is from homeschooling. So I've alluded to that several times. So, you know, I'm not going to camp out on that, but I've studied multiple languages. I'm like, I'm, I'm always learning and I'm figuring out how to, to run a business and stuff. Um, but aside from that, I'm really close to my mom. She's like one of my best friends. Aww. And I think that's pretty cool too. So I think that's pretty cool as well. So before we end here, um, sorry, she, I just going to add, she was actually my matron of honor in my wedding. So like we're pretty tight. <laughs> wow. That does say a lot. That yeah. really says a lot. Yeah. So before we end, um, I know, like you said, you have a business. And so I would like you to just tell our audience. So if there's anyone in our audience that likes to vacation and uh, utilize BNBs, or maybe them, they themselves want to learn how do you manage a B, an Airbnb. Tell us a little tiny bit about your business, and then we'll put in the show notes um, any links um, so that people, people can find out more about what you do. Yeah, sure. Thanks. Um, so my business name is BNB Made Simple. Um, we do high-touch high property management and success coaching for Airbnbs and other short-term rentals. That's the umbrella term for Airbnbs um, in the industry. So I'm based in Atlanta. So I have um, about 25 units in my portfolio. So if you're ever in Atlanta and want to stay somewhere, um, you know, hit me up. I'll probably have a place for you. Um, but I also, I mentioned a part of that is coaching. So I have two flagship coaching courses that basically teach people how to do what I do. So my model is, is co-host, which means I, I work as a property manager for the owners of the homes. I don't invest the capital and own the property myself. Um, so I have two, two courses. One is like for beginners getting into it. It's called Sprint to Superhost. 
And the other is for more advanced that really teach you how to scale and turn it into a business. Um, and that's called the Co-Host Accelerator. So if you're interested in either of those, I'd love to hear from you. And do you have a website for that, Lauren? I do. But my website is bnbmadesimple.com. Okay. And you can find links to, to both of the courses on there as well, but we'll, we'll put them in the show notes too. Okay. Awesome. So I just want to thank you so much, Lauren, uh, for being with us today. Um, it was so funny looking at you um, through the Zoom and seeing the younger version of your mom. <laughs> Yeah, I know I exactly like I was talking I about like when I'm older, <laughs> <laughs> but you definitely have your own personality and it's been an absolute pleasure uh, having you on today. So for our audience, I'm going to say, stay tuned. We're going to have more guests like Lauren that have graduated from homeschooling so that you can know that homeschooling is a very viable option. And we're going to be raw and real. And we're going to tell you the good, the bad, the ugly and the brilliant. So stay tuned and we'll see you again on the next You Can Homeschool podcast. Take care. Bye-bye.